In the last episode, we were working on this 2004 Honda Pilot. The car had been sitting for a while since I bought it, and I finally removed the transmission, and I got it about halfway apart. Now, we gotta find the problem inside the transmission, correct it, and get it back in the car, and then we can finally see what else is wrong with it. I don't believe there's much else wrong with it, especially since it fired up and started off a good jump. It also moved inside, so the transmission is not completely bad. So we're probably just looking for something clogging up the filter, and we're going to fix that and move on. Hopefully everything will drive correctly once we get it back in the car, but you know, you never know until you get it in. <clears throat> we got a Honda partly disassembled here. So this is a five-speed. Uh, these Hondas, uh, they're, um, they're not too complex. They're a little different. Uh, some people like them, some people hate them, but, um, so you got these tubes here, those are important. Okay, now we're going to get the rest of this transmission apart, and it can be a little bit of a task. That's kind of why I'm filming it. Like I said earlier, I'll know where everything goes back, and it'll be exactly the way it came apart. And now with these Honda transmissions, you kind of want to do that. By the way, I will be releasing some videos on the complete transmission rebuild process. They will be available on my other channel and as soon as they are available I will post a link on this video below. That being said, I will not be taking you through the complete transmission process in this video. I will simply be telling the story of me fixing this Honda Pilot and my trials and tribulations when doing so. Now back to the transmission. These transmissions are very touchy, like I was saying, and if you don't get them back together exactly right, they're not going to work exactly the way they're supposed to. In fact, sometimes they won't even move at all if you don't get them back together exactly right. So, for that reason, I'm going to be taking this transmission all the way apart. I'm talking every valve body, every little valve, everything is coming apart, and we're going to inspect it and make sure it gets installed back properly and works properly. Now, let me break down this transmission a little bit for you. This is a BVGA6, part of the three-shaft, five-speed Honda transmission family. There are five clutch drums for each gear. There's also a reverse gear with a shift fork, and it kind of works like a manual transmission. Actually, the whole thing kind of works like a manual transmission, except everything is hydraulically controlled. So to go through all the subcomponents that we have, first we have the main control valve body. This is the big valve body you see right here. Next, we have the regulator body. This sits on top of the main valve body and regulates the hydraulic pressure throughout the transmission. Now this is the accumulator body. It houses the fourth and fifth clutch accumulators. Next, we have the servo body. Now, this houses the reverse servo, which actuates that reverse fork we talked about earlier. And you see I'm boring out some valves here. The CPC B and C valves are located here, and they give you some problems as well. And then the last of the valve bodies and the servo bodies, we have this top accumulator body, which houses the first and second accumulators. Then we have the shafts. And on this one, it's kind of like a manual, like I said, but it's hydraulically controlled. And you have the main shaft, which houses fourth and fifth clutches and has the gears corresponding with them. And then you have the counter shaft, which houses the reverse gear. And it also transfers the power from each shaft to the main differential. And then you have the secondary shaft, which has first and second gear and third gear actually mates on the counter shaft but outside the case on top of the transmission kind of weird now i'm sure you're wondering eddie when are you going to get to the actual problem with this transmission the main problem inside this transmission was actually inside the torque converter and this torque converter clutch this is the mating surface for the clutch this is the back cover and it as you can see is really rough it's supposed to be very smooth um very smooth and it's very rough and that's from the, the clutch hub itself over here she did i'm gonna tell you why so there's supposed to be a clutch on there and i got one right here we're gonna bond a new clutch to that the torque converter clutch had 
failed on this thing and threw metal throughout the whole entire transmission. And what that does is it gets valve stopped up, it gets the filter stopped up, and it just messes up the hydraulic pressure throughout the unit. And these things are very touchy, so if you mess up any type of that pressure, you're not going to get it to drive the way it's supposed to. Now, luckily for me, due to my 9 to 5 daily job, I am able to actually repair this converter in-house and save me about two to three hundred bucks which in the long run can help out a whole lot because we don't know what else is wrong with this vehicle until we get a good transmission back in it and we could drive it around it could have some suspension issues it could have some other issues that we got to fork out some more money for so what else do we got to do to this transmission to get it back in the car and get it to drive well you remember those cpc valves i told you about earlier in the servo body that usually give you a problem well you guessed it they were very stuck and they gave us a huge problem on this. In fact, one time I built one of these Hondas and I ended up having to pull it back out about five or six times and I finally found this valve stuck. So I always be sure to check this valve. Just a little tip if you're going to be rebuilding a Honda. So we had to do all this work because a torque converter failed, clogged up a filter, and had these valves a little stuck. Now, Here's another tip. If you're going to build these Hondas, while you have them apart, do everything you can to them. And that's what I did with this one. I changed every friction. I sanded every steel. Every piece of rubber inside this transmission was changed and no part of metal was left dirty on this transmission inside or out. I wanted to make sure I did this thing right. That way I only did it one time. And I didn't have to take it back out of the car. It's an all-wheel drive and it's a little hard to get out. It's not the easiest one to pull in and out. Plus, the valve body is not accessible when the transmission is in the car. So, do it right, do it light, do it wrong, do it long. Alright, so we got everything rebuilt on the transmission. We went through the entire valve body. We went through each drum over here and uh, we replaced the sprag down there there's all our parts that we replaced you see it's pretty clogged up got a lot of stuff in there a lot of metal that's the new one you see it's pretty clean we got one more third clutch of drum to go through and then we're going to put all the gears back together fit it all in the car and uh, drive it around uh, on the vehicle itself it looks you know pretty decent everything looks all right um, brakes look okay uh, looks like somebody put pads on there not too long ago rotors are even okay they're a little rusted a little bit of spider webs from it sitting out in the parking lot but that's all right um, and we're just going to drive it around make sure it works and uh you know change the oil in it do a little bit of service into it all these parts all those parts all those parts but not that dog that dog stays with me what do you think mabel huh what do you think uh, we got um we got two new mounts coming because these mounts are a little old they still have some thousand miles on them and uh, we're going to take the uh transmission and flip it over and then we have uh, a converter to weld up we're going to weld that up all right so anyway this bracket all right, bolts in right there. All right, the problem with that is, is that a power steering rack goes right here. And it's extremely hard to get to that bolt with the power steering rack in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this nut off right here. And we're going to weld it on the inside of this bracket. That way we can put the nut through, the bolt through this way and put the nut on that way. So hopefully that works out. We're going to try it. With the bolt fixed on the frame, it was a whole lot easier to get this thing in. I didn't talk about that much on the removal process, but that bolt hiding behind that power steering rack took me about an hour to get out. I didn't film all of that because, of course, it's boring and you can't really see what I'm doing. But we got this thing back in and lining up the transmission. That's what Pops is helping me do right here. And we get it up in there. We line up the dials, pit two bell housing bolts on each side of it and then screw them down tight to where they squeeze on the dials and then you want to line up the torque converter and probably go ahead and put some torque converter bolts in it as well that way you just got them already lined up and ready to go 
And then after that, you want to get your subframe back up there. Pops came back down, helped me get the subframe lined up. Because this is really a two-person job. I mean, getting the subframe up on the jack with that piece of wood really takes two people. And then you got to raise it up, line it up with the motor and the transmission, and then line the whole thing up with the body of the car. And there's four mounting bolts that you got to line up. So it's a little bit difficult, and it's really difficult to do it by yourself, although I have done it before. Then the last thing I have to do as far as a big thing that you're going to see on this video is get the exhaust system back up. I took the whole exhaust system down so I didn't have to cut and weld it. And we're just going to be getting the system back up here, putting the rubber mounts back on the hangers, and then bolting up the flanges to the manifolds. Now there's a bunch of other small things I had to do, like the all-wheel drive system, and bolting up the drive shaft, putting the axles in, putting the ball joints in, plugging up all the wiring harnesses, filling up the transmission, putting the battery box in, putting the battery back in, hooking up all the cables and making sure it all works. Then we could finally put some fluid in this thing. All right, we are back installed. We have transmission fluid in it. Um, we had a little bit of a short going on with the starter down there. The starter connection was actually touching the starter, so I had to move it over just a little bit. So be aware of that if you do any of these Honda Pilots or any Honda, really. Make sure that starter connection is not touching the starter. Now, now that we got everything uh, squared away with that, we got it full of fluid and transmission fluid and oil. Um, we're going to go ahead and start it and see if it goes in gear. Hopefully it does. And... Uh, then we're going to take a break <laughs> and we're going to drive it. So, here goes nothing. We got power, we got everything. So. All right. Okay. All right, we got reverse. Got drive. All right. We do have a check engine light and a VTM4 light. Not sure that exactly what that is, but none of our uh, indicator lights for our transmission are flashing, which is a good sign. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, double check the oil in it, transmission fluid, and then we're gonna lift check it again and then come back from lunch and we're gonna drive it. Lift the jump box ride shotgun. All right. All right, let's see what happens now. Well, looks like we got a little pit of play over here. All right, the same thing as always, you know, wait till there's a lot of cars. There's no cars here. And let it ease into the shift pattern here. So let's go wait a few minutes. All right, it looks like we're okay. We're gonna go into the right hand lane here. Besides that brake shield noise, seems to be driving alright. Alright, we're going to take a pause real quick and see if I can get this brake shield fixed. That is very annoying. Too. Okay, we got a third pressure switch failure. I'm gonna clear that. 
Sounds a lot better, but that that third clutch pressure switch is giving us a problem. All right, we're in a different parking lot now. We are um, down here on the opposite side of the, the main road that my shop's on, and uh, we're gonna. We, looks like we have all five gears. We just have a pressure control code. Maybe it's just wiring harness isn't plugged all the way in something like that i checked it when we were in the other parking lot but uh we're gonna drive it back down to the shop and i got the shift uh gear shift right there under shift control obviously we're in first gear right now so we're gonna go down the road and there's shift two that's second gear we're gonna make sure it goes all the way up to five three nice smooth shift speed to get up to five here. There we go. All right, all five gears and there we go past the shop there. So it seems like we're doing okay and uh, we're going to take it back in to the, to the shop and uh, put it back on the lift and see if we can get that check in that, that D light and stop flashing. I, I actually made a video okay so if you watched my uh, other video on the crv pressure switches you will know that to find these pressure switches you look on the back of the unit and you see a number three you know that's the third clutch pressure tap we already know from rebuilding the transmission that the third clutch drum is in the back of the unit back here and so hidden behind this little shield right here is the third clutch pressure switch and uh, all looks good with the wiring harness and uh, everything that goes to it. There's the wiring harness, there's the third clutch pressure switch itself. So we're just going to try to swap it out. And you know, look, have it. I have a third clutch pressure switch right here. So I'm just going to try this extra one that's been laying around the shop for a little while and maybe it'll work. I don't know. We're gonna see. All right, we're back on the road. We're in second gear. We're about to hit third. See if the. All right. Looks like the check engine light is not flashing anymore. Good, good, good. I mean, the not check engine light. I'm sorry. Looks like the drive indicator light is not flashing anymore, which means we're not throwing that code anymore. Which means uh, I feel comfortable enough to drive this thing on the interstate. And uh, we got a bus in front of us here, so we're gonna go ahead and take it up on the interstate. All right, folks, we are back with this Honda Pilot. And we've been driving it around for a few days. Seems to be doing good, driving good. Now, there is a little bit of noise when we first start off. It kind of seems like something going back, like the tire's going back. You can start off real, real hard on acceleration. And uh, we took it to go get state inspection, and no bueno. They rejected me. They rejected me no good well they rejected me for a few different things uh one of which is just a ripped windshield wiper and uh, they also told me that the uh tire rods were a little loose on this vehicle so 
Uh, and then the last thing they rejected me on was how dirty it is inside. Doors are locked. Oh, well. okay. But actually, the last thing they rejected me on was this light was out. I already replaced the bulb in that. And uh, then they rejected me and said, this thing's too dirty, man. You need to vacuum it out. Got a little bit of trash in here from the old owner. Looks like somebody had some subs in here at one time. We're going to clean it out today. We're going to put new inner and outer tire rods on it. Try to get it good where we can get that rejection sticker off. You know what we're going to do right now? Just take that off. You know, just toss it in there with the rest of the trash. Also, forgot to mention that VTM4 light is on right down here. And I figured out what that is. So, turn the car on. Get that CO2 out of here. So, I'm, I'm hoping it's just low on fluid. So, we got some Honda Genuine VTM4 differential fluid. Goes in the rear diff. So, we're going to get started on some stuff. Okay, let me explain a little bit here. So I needed to replace the inner tire rods on them. And to do that, I have to get this tool on it. And the boot was in the way. So to get the boot off, you have to take the outer tire rod off. Well, when I went to take the outer tire rod off, I tried several times. I could not break the outer tire rod from the inner tire rod. So I decided to cut the outer tire rod off. And I cut it off, but I cut it in the wrong place. And needless to say, on the other side, I cut the inner tire rod first before cutting the outer one so I could get the boot off and access the inner tire rod to put this tool on it. But the important thing is, is we were able to get new inner tire rods on it. Now we could get it back over to the inspector to see what he could find wrong with it this time. Hopefully he doesn't fail me again. And if he does, I might be finding a new one. All right, folks, we are driving the Honda Pilot. And uh, look what we got, a brand new Virginia State inspection, past inspection after we put them uh, tire rods on and uh, inner and outer tire rods and uh, put some new wiper blades on it and fix that uh, light back there in the rear. So uh, it's driving really good. As you can see, the steering wheel is nice and straight. And I didn't fix it like I fixed that key on my reel that, that made all those mechanics mad on the website. If you haven't seen that, go check that out on my Facebook and Instagram. While I was busy making videos and promoting my Facebook and Instagram, my dad was busy back at the shop and he was getting a sale for this Honda Pilot. He had a customer that had come in with a bad transmission on a Nissan Sentra and they were looking to just buy another car instead of fixing that one once again. Turns out it's cheaper to buy an old Honda than it is to replace a Nissan CVT transmission. Although now I will be stuck with the task of replacing this Nissan transmission and getting it back on the road for somebody to have as reliable transportation. But we'll save that for another video. As far as this Honda Pilot goes, the last thing I had to do was get the check engine light off. And that was actually fairly simple. All I had to do was replace an O2 sensor. Didn't take any footage of it, but we got the check engine light off and we got this thing cleaned out and it was ready for a new owner. All right, guys, we're backing it out of the shop and the, uh, the buyer is here. 
and uh, we got the reverse light fixed obviously check engine light and vtm four light off put an o2 sensor on it no big deal and uh we're gonna get a tag and title this thing in somebody's name and uh hopefully it'll be a good car for them i think it'll be a good car for them so and this is the nissan right here we're getting for it so uh He's going to be uh, trading this Nissan in with a bad transmission on it and trading that in to us and he's going to be getting a brand new Honda Pilot. Now we can actually take a sigh of relief because one project has been completed. The break doesn't last long because we have another project coming in, a 2014 Nissan Sentra with a bad transmission. These Nissan CVTs are very problematic, so I doubt I'll be driving into rebuilding this thing at all. For now, I have plenty of projects and tons of videos to make. So if you made it this far in the video, you might as well go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the like button for me. And go ahead and comment and let me know anything you'd like to see me do. And until next time, you stay dirty and I will too.